Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at a couple of examples of solving a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the a, b, and c here correspond to our coefficients in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So our first step is always to use the quadratic formula. We want to get our quadratic equation equal to zero. And then in this case, our a is going to be the coefficient on our x squared, which is an understood one in the equation x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals zero. Our b is the coefficient on the x. And our c is our coefficient or our constant where there's no x's. Make sure that you have them matched up and that they're all on the same side of the equation. And then we plug in x equals negative b, so we get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared is 16. 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. So 16 minus 8 gives us an 8 underneath that square root. And then in the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. Now remember, we cannot divide out any common factors unless we take them out of all three terms. And we can't divide something out under a square root with something outside a square root, so we do need to simplify that square root of 8. So 8, we're looking for the biggest perfect square that goes into it. Well, 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. 4 is a perfect square. 2 is not and does not have any perfect squares that go into it. And so we can write this as the square root of 4. So we've got negative 4 plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2. And then this 2 is still underneath the square root. And then we still have a 2 in the denominator. Now we have a 2 that we can divide out of each of our terms. And we divide it out of 4. We're left with 2. So we get a negative 2 plus or minus, this two completely cancels out, but we still have the one underneath the square root. The one in the bottom completely cancels out, so one is our denominator. And so our solutions are negative two plus or minus the square root of two. All right, now let's look at same process using the quadratic formula on three x squared minus 11 x plus 10 equals zero. So using the quadratic formula, our a is going to be 3. This is already equal to 0. Our b is going to be negative 11. And our c is going to be 10. When we plug it in, negative, negative 11. Negative b is going to give us a negative, negative 11, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So we get minus a negative 11 is going to give us a positive 11 out front. Underneath the square root, we've got 11, sorry, negative 11 squared. So that's going to be 121. And then 4 times 3 times 10. 4 times 3 is 12 times 10 is 120. And so 121 minus 120. And then in the denominator, 2 times 3 is 6. So plus or minus 121 minus 120 is the square root of 1. Square root of 1 does simplify. That's just going to be 1. So we get 11 plus or minus 1 over 6. Since our square root completely went away, we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit further. This is going to be 11 plus 1 over 6 and 11 minus 1 over 6. 11 plus 1 is 12 over 6. 
gives us 2, and 11 minus 1 is 10 over 6. 10 and 6 have a common factor. We can simplify that to 5 over 3. And so that will be our solution there. And let's do one more. All right, our last example, we've got 9x squared equals 5 minus 9x. In order to use the quadratic formula on this, we have to get them all on the same side of the equation, equal to zero. It does not matter which direction you go. I like having my a be a positive number anytime I'm working on anything. And so I'm actually gonna move it, move it all to the left. So 9x squared, and then when we move the negative 9x from the right, we're gonna add 9x, so we'll get a positive 9x. And then we have a positive five, when we move it to the other side, we're gonna have a minus five. So we get a is equal to nine, b is equal to nine, and c is equal to negative five. So when we plug in the quadratic formula, we get our negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times our a value, which is nine, times our c value, which is negative five, all over two times nine. So we get negative nine plus or minus nine squared underneath that square root is 81. Four times nine times five, four times five is going to give us 20 times nine is gonna be 180, but we have a negative times a positive times a negative gives us a positive, and then two times nine is 18. 81 plus 180 gives us a square root of 261. And 261 is not a perfect square, so we need to try to simplify it. Um, 81 and 180 are both divisible by nine. And so nine and 29, well 29 is a prime number, Nine is a perfect square, so we can write the square root of 261 as the square root of nine, which is three, times the square root of 29, which doesn't simplify. And we do have a common factor, nine, three, and 18 are all divisible by three. So if we divide every, Divide three out of each of those, the three is gonna go away, our nine's gonna become a three, and our 18's gonna become a six. And so we get negative three plus or minus the square root of 29 all over six. And that is our answer. All right, I'll see you guys next time.